So you want to be a master hell diver, liberating the galaxy of the scourge that is the Terminids and automatons. Well, we all do in service to super earth, but you have to start somewhere. We're doing something a little different here today. Today, we're taking a stab at hell divers two for beginners. Love that we had so much interest in the game based off the initial review a few days ago. And there were a ton of questions that I had seen about the game in general, about certain aspects. So today I want to run down a brief explainer of what hell divers really is, things you need to know and some more stuff in between. So if you enjoy this, you find it at all insightful or you enjoy Helldivers 2 and other branching out content, do me the biggest favor and drop a like on the video. Maybe consider subscribing as well if you're new, but for now, let's jump into it. Firstly, let's know your role as a Helldiver. The objective of the game is to spread democracy all over. But in all seriousness, you're tasked with liberating worlds from the Terminids and Automatons. This is done by completing missions from the Galactic War with sectors of the Hollow Map on your ship, highlighted in red or yellow, depending on which side of the war you'd like to fight. You can jump back and forth. There's no need to do everything on one side before the other, though the Automatons might prove a bit more difficult for underleveled players. Missions will have main and side objectives that can yield various items and progression for players that complete them. Missions are scaled in difficulty. You, as a level one cadet, will only have the availability of tier one and the easiest difficulties. The easiest of missions, but as you rank up, you'll start to gain more and more difficulties that will gradually test you further and further. Sometimes you'll feel underleveled by a ton, but you'll get there. But what's the point of fighting increasingly tougher enemies if you can gain XP and rank up all the same on, say, lower difficulty missions? Well, higher level missions offer more bonuses and XP for completion, so it's a matter of like scaling that rank progression. You'll do it faster if you challenge yourself more and more. As you complete missions, you'll notice that by the end of the missions, you'll be receiving things like XP, requisition slips, or denoted as R, and medals, and the optional pickups are things like samples. So what do these all do for you? Well, XP, this is an easy one. It just allows you to progress your character, unlocking more difficulty levels, unlocking additional items as you go along, and other things. Just your basic leveling system here at this. Your requisition slips, though, or your Rs, these are like an in-game currency that isn't a monetary unit like you'd use in the shop, but instead an in-game currency that allows you to unlock things in-game, allowing you to allocate your resources to help you in your grind a little further. These are used on things like stratagems, the tools like resupply packs, heavier weaponry like machine guns, rail guns, and such, aerial support streaks like bombardments or strafing runs, utility like a jetpack or sentry turret, you name it. We'll touch on those more in a bit, but those are all unlocked via via requisition, so it's important that you end up getting as much as possible, which you do by, again, completing these missions and objectives. Metals are something that is another type of currency, but only for the player, and it doesn't help you out directly when you're playing your actual game, or to some degree. Metals are instead ways that you can unlock items from both the free and premium battle pass, or rather what they're called war bond. So you can end up unlocking things like new armor, new weaponry, new cosmetics, and other stuff like that. Now, samples are items that you'll find around the world that can be dropped if you die. So you'll want to make sure that you are careful, or if you do die, you come back and pick those up because you have to exfil with them for them to be credited to your account. But simply, samples are used for your ship modules and certain upgrades there within. With common, denoted as green, rare as orange, and rarer as pink, you'll find these around the world you're liberating while dropping in. We can and very well may dive deeper into the easiest ways to find these and obtain these in a later video, but that's a bit more in-depth of a subject than the surface level beginner guide that we're doing here at this, so we'll save that for later. But these samples can be used to unlock upgrades for stratagems in your ship module sector of the ship management, which will then in turn make things like your stratagems have extra bonus items and utility. So kind of like upgrading your ship and your utility as you go along. Then you also have additional things in your sort of mission objectives of major orders and personal orders. Your major order is a galactic challenge that is for all players playing Helldivers, and all players can contribute to it, and this will last longer than your personal orders. For example, the most recent major order as of the time of recording this has been to win at least eight defend campaigns against the automatons for a reward of 12,500 requisition slips, a lot of currency that you could use to upgrade your stuff. Now, the difference is that this isn't just a defend mission against the automatons, it's instead liberating the planets that have the defend marked on them during that time frame, meaning that it's not something you can do quickly to farm through eight missions, you'll have to take part in this in liberating these worlds, and the reward is a bit less immediate. It will take time, and it's a community sort of challenge. Now, personal orders on the opposite side of things. This is a daily challenge of sorts that will task you with various things. The cool part is that this seems to be something that is applied to your entire squad, as my squad ended up having the kill 60 enemies with the anti-material rifle challenge when I had last checked, 
My squad worked on that. They ended up completing theirs. And despite me not having that stratagem equipped, not using it at all that game, I also got that same reward of what was 15 medals. So a nifty little thing here, maybe a bug, maybe a feature, but I'll take the extra medals where I can get them either way. Next, let's jump into some sort of in-game stuff here, prepping for an actually in-game. Setting up your Helldiver, you'll want to make sure that you are conscious of your armor. While there are a lot of random things like capes you can get in Helldivers and a lot of other cosmetic things, armor is one of those things you might look at and just be like, oh, that's cool, but I probably won't use it too much. But you might want to look again because armor can offer different ratings, speeds, and stamina regen, as well as additional passive traits that can help you out. So things like how much damage armor can sponge, how fast you are with that armor, and how quickly you can regain your stamina back after that, plus again, bonus attributes absolutely make armor worth at least looking into. Especially in the beginner's guide, there's no real right or wrong answer, but just make sure that you check that out on what fits whatever mission you're going on the best and what feels comfortable to you. Weaponry, while you can absolutely stick with some of the basic weapons for a while, just keep a note on additional weaponry that isn't stratagem weaponry. You'll gain access to more weapons in the war bond or battle pass progression. And don't worry, there's plenty of options in that free war bond. But again, like the armor, especially in the beginner's guide, weaponry is predominantly user dependent. There's absolutely right or wrong answers later on down the line for what you'd want to use. But for the first bit of missions and difficulty levels, not so much. You can get away with just experimenting with other things and checking it all out. Now, when you actually deploy in for Helldivers, deploying, you can end up setting up your character with upwards of four stratagems and a booster. Stratagems, like we mentioned, are things that can be unlocked to help you and your squad. Stratagems, though, are a team utility in some aspects, though, so make sure you're conscious of that. Things like resupplies, if a teammate calls one in, it'll then start the cooldown for everyone, even though not everyone may have called theirs in. So it's a one use item for that kind of stuff. But additionally, other things like lethals and other individual aerial support stuff, that's individual player based, meaning that you can have multiple of those aerial raids or aerial streaks that aren't tethered to team use. So you can end up absolutely spamming an exfil if you're getting overrun or something like that. But also be aware that cooldowns are something you should be conscious of as well, with varying different time frames for each different stratagem. The higher powered ones have a higher cooldown. Now, boosters, if I'm not mistaken, actually apply to your whole squad, not just you, which is pretty cool. They offer additional bonuses in game that can be very, very beneficial if you end up unlocking them. Currently available, we have the Hell Pod optimization, where Hell Divers come in with full ammo, grenades, and stims. The Vitality Enhancement, which allows for all Hell Divers to resist injury, like broken legs and things like that. The UAV Recon, which increases the Hell Divers' effective radar range. The Stamina Enhancement, which increases all Hell Divers' stamina capacity and recovery. The Muscle Enhancements, which allows for traversal of difficult to rain with ease, increase reinforcement budgets, which will allow for an increase in the amount of reinforcements you have, meaning more lives in a mission, and then a premium booster in that paid war bond or battle pass. There's also the flexible reinforcement budget, which reduces the time until new reinforcements are granted once they've been depleted if you run out of additional lives per se. So you want to make sure that when you're jumping into a mission, you and your squad have stuff coordinated so that you can all sort of riff off each other and give you all the best chance for success. But also, if you have boosters available, you will absolutely want to use those. Now, next, in-game, knowing your HUD is something that's very important. Missions are timed, so in the upper right of your HUD, once you drop in, you'll see a T-minus countdown timer for how much time you have on a mission alongside the difficulty level that you've chosen. Mission objectives are found just below that. Your TAC map is found by hitting the tab button or whatever you have it bound to on the equivalent on PS5. Forgive my ignorance for what the default is on that. I don't play on PS5 for this, I play on PC. But you'll be able to see objectives for each mission, where clusters of enemies are, where your side objectives are and such. Your objectives are also for the main or side, also alongside teammate pings, available to be seen on that tack map, but you can also follow your compass atop your HUD as well. In the lower left, you'll end up seeing your own and your teammate icons for things like ammo reserves. For yours, the largest thing you'll see is grenades available, magazines available, and underneath that, your long bar is your health bar. Health regen is not automatic, so you'll need to use a stim, which is denoted by the amount you have available, that stim icon directly next to your health bar, and the number you have on hand. The nice part is it'll also give you information about your teammates' inventory. Red denoting, say, if a teammate is out of stims or ammo, if they have any utility items like the ammo backpack, that's denoted on the HUD as well. So all nice and quick identifiers for you and your squad to make informed decisions. Now, when it comes to the game itself, team play is huge. Like we mentioned, there are a limited number of respawns, or rather reinforcements, 
kind of. In that upper left of your HUD, you'll end up seeing a number that denotes the amount of immediate reinforcements that you can end up using, which is basically just like your team redeploying. In easier difficult missions, or if you're not messing around and just team killing each other, this will be a non-issue, but as you scale in difficulty, balancing those things may not be the most easiest of tasks. Once you were to hit zero reinforcements left, then reinforcements are on a cooldown, which means there will be time where you cannot redeploy back in, and it's all on your teammates who are alive to keep that fight for democracy going, otherwise you failed a mission. Once again, stratagems are team-based, some on a shared timer, some are not, so coordination sometimes really is key. Additional things that is absolutely important to note is that, well, firstly, one of the big ones is that reloading tops you off, but discards any remaining rounds in a magazine. So if you are, say, like me for Call of Duty, you get a kill within the first five rounds of your magazine, well, then you end up reloading. But if that was, say, a 40 round magazine, you just lost 35 rounds, which in this game is insanely crucial. So be conscious that you'll probably want to make sure you go until you have like one or two rounds or you feel like you have one or two rounds left. Again, you will see that sort of scaling on the indicator go down on your HUD, but we don't have an actual ammo count available at the moment. So it is something that will have to either depend on feel or going until it says, hey, I'm out of ammo. Friendly fire also is enabled to do with that what you will. Sometimes it can make for some hilarious moments, but also it can either sometimes hurt your team if either done intentionally or unintentionally. So just be aware of that. The hip fire air quote bloom is in effect here with this as well, where you might notice that if you're playing in third person and shooting, your crosshair might be a bit ahead of where your shots are actually going per se, denoted by that circle near your crosshair. This is caused by a number of things, movement while firing, quickly changing target locations, you name it, but it can certainly get annoying, but part of the game. If you'd like to get rid of that or the third person aiming isn't your cup of tea, First person aiming also is a thing as well, where you can toggle that actually on PC by aiming in and hitting your mouse wheel and it will toggle or on PlayStation 5, I believe it's the R3 button. Now, talking binding, another thing that is important to know and something that could be a key tip of information is key binding for stratagems. Right now, it's currently hold and then you have to type in whatever stratagem keypad number it is, which is denoted by WASD, up, down, side, and side. But it is something that can be helpful if you say, set it to be tap to toggle, not hold, which will allow you to free up your pinky and just tap that button to open up your stratagem instead of having to hold it down while tapping in that input code. Keys versus arrows is also something that's worth investigating into if you want to change your key binds. That's something that I've seen recently where it's not only just better for faster association, it's just the direct match of up, down, left, right versus those few milliseconds that it may take you to be like, okay, W is up, A is left, S is down, D is right, or whatever it may be. But also it might just be easier for your movement, for your hand placement on the key subjectively, allowing for more movement and calling items in on the go, whereas maybe not. Now, beyond that, we're almost done here. Some additional information, war bond and battle pass progression is something that's pretty cool where the war bonds or battle passes don't expire. So if you come into the game three, four, five months down the line, you can still get all those initial things even if they moved on to a new war bond being introduced. Just a cool little note. And finally, solo play is certainly possible here within Helldivers 2, and it's certainly doable, but frankly, I find that one of the many beauties of this game is to be playing with people, and not only because it's just helpful to have more sets of eyes, more firepower, and things that you can coordinate with your team, but also the moments you make together. It's just a lot of fun in that regard. So what is nice is you can also end up joining or having people join randomly, which can help out if you are solo, so you might not necessarily always be alone, yeah, if you have friends, it's a great game to play with friends. But anyways, that is a Helldivers 2 beginner guide here that I think can be very beneficial if you jump in or you're jumping in for the first time, one of the first time. That said, this we're gonna call it a very different video than we're maybe used to here on the channel, but I just, I've been having fun with Helldivers, man. I wanna make some more content here on this. I hope you guys do enjoy. And again, if you guys do, do me a favor and drop a like on it. We'll be live over on Twitch here upcoming. So if you guys wanna join in on the conversations and actually hang out with us as we're fighting for democracy, I'd love to have you guys out there. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of Helldivers 2? What do you think of the guide? Anything you guys would like to add? Whatever the case, feel free to. But if you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor again and drop a like. It really does help out the video and consider subscribing for more to stay the day with all things Helldivers and other content here on the channel. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Might as well espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.